Hi, my name is Erin Hughes. I am from Jamestown High School, and my project is the effect of baseball orientation on number of oscillations. For my project, I wanted to see how baseball pitchers are able to manipulate the way that they hold the ball in order to get different types of pitches to come out. This project aimed to look at exactly how each pitch performs differently and why it does that. My hypothesis for this experiment was if the baseball stitching is vertical with no twisting of the string, then there will be the greatest number of oscillations. My independent variable was baseball orientation and my dependent variable was the number of oscillations completed. The research question that I was looking at was which orientation of the ball will produce the greatest number of oscillations and why do I think that orientation produced the greatest number? My expected outcomes were that the vertical stitching alone will produce the greatest number of oscillations, then the horizontal stitching alone will produce the next greatest, followed by the horizontal stitching with twisted string, and the least number of oscillations will be the vertical stitching with the twisted string. For groups 1 and 2, I was not going to be twisting the string, so I started by tying the baseball to the 25-inch string located in the middle of the pendulum. I also made sure that the stitching coordinated with the group, so group 1 had horizontal stitching and group 2 had vertical stitching. Then I brought the baseball up to a 90 degree angle and as I released the ball I started the timer for 45 seconds. During the 45 seconds I was counting the number of oscillations that were being completed and once the 45 seconds was up I recorded the number of oscillations and any qualitative data that I observed. Then I allowed the pendulum to come to a complete stop. I removed the baseball from the string and rotated it for the next group. For groups three and four, I was going to be twisting the string, so I made sure that the ball was secure in the string and that the stitching coordinated with the group, group three having vertical stitching and group four having horizontal stitching. I brought the baseball up to a 90 degree angle and then I twisted the ball in the string 50 times clockwise. Then I released the ball and also started a timer for 45 seconds at the same time. During the 45 seconds, I was counting the number of oscillations completed and once the 45 seconds was up, I recorded the number of oscillations completed along with writing down qualitative data that I observed. Then I allowed the pendulum to come to a complete stop and then the baseball was removed with the sh from the string and rotated so that the stitching coordinated with the next group that I would be trying. After the 45 seconds was up for each group, I recorded the number of oscillations in an online data table. I also recorded the qualitative data and other observations in a notebook that I kept with me. There were no risks during this experiment and there were no safety precautions taken. My results showed that the baseball with the horizontal stitching and the twisted string produced the greatest number of oscillations, and the baseball with vertical stitching and no twisting of the string produced the fewest number. One thing that I think was beneficial was allowing the pendulum to come to a complete stop before I tried to change out the baseball and its orientation because it would have continued spinning if I did not. Um, another thing was replacing the string after group four of each trial was beneficial because of how many times the string was twisted during each trial and it ended up compromising some of the string when I had twisted it. Things that I observed while watching my trials be performed was that in group one the ball began rotating in a counterclockwise motion while it was oscillating also, in group 2, during the first trial, the oscillations were so wide and long that the ball hit the sides of the pendulum. This did not have an eff that big of an effect on the number of oscillations because the, number were the numbers for each trial were very similar, but the ball stopped moving in a counterclockwise motion and stayed 
swinging in basically a straight line from left to right. With groups three and four, the ball started spinning on the string very fast, and then it had stopped at about the 13th oscillation, but then started spinning in the string very fast again around the 16th oscillation. While it was spinning, it was moving clockwise and counterclockwise respectively. Then when it stopped, it began going in the opposite direction than it began in. Groups 1, 2, and 4 all began rotating in a counterclockwise motion while oscillating, but group 3 began oscillating in a clockwise motion. When thinking of expected outcomes for this experiment, I thought that twisting the string with either the vertical or horizontal stitching would have more of an impact on the ball because the ball would be spinning faster inside the string and therefore would create smaller, shorter, and more frequent oscillations. We know we know from real life that when a curveball is thrown, it spins slower and has more top spin and more of an unknown flight path because of how far it drops on its path to the plate. And a curveball is actually manipulated easier than a fastball because it is less precise in where it's going to land up anyways. So the vertical stitching with and without the string being twisted was sh helpful of showing that because it, they both produce fewer average oscillations than either groups 1 or group 4 which had the horizontal stitching. We also know that a fastball has more of a straighter path to the plate and it spins faster obviously because of the name and this was proved with the horizontal stitching both with and without the string being twisted because they had the highest average number of oscillations and they were more controlled oscillations. The results of this experiment did not support my hypothesis because the baseball with the horizontal stitching and the twisted string had the highest number of oscillations. One problem I stated that I ran into earlier was with group 2 during the first trial, the ball had such wide oscillations that it was hitting the sides of the pendulums and stopped swinging in a counterclockwise motion and stayed primarily in a straight line going left to right. One thing I thought was interesting and would like to investigate is why when I twisted the string and the ball was spinning in the string, why did the ball stop spinning and then start spinning again? Also, having a background knowledge of the game of baseball and pitching helped me come to some of my conclusions and helped me in this experiment as a whole, knowing that a fastball moves faster and more precise than a curveball supports the results that I got even though it did not support my hypothesis.